Good day, hi, and welcome. Let's just jump into this. All right, so this video, I thought, okay, I've done a lot of videos on like sport bikes and stuff like that, and I thought I might, might as well make a, uh, a, a, a video on like um, you know really good cruisers you can buy for like under three grand. Now there's a little caveat here. There's one or two bikes were thirty five hundred bucks, and there's one bike that was um, four thousand. But other than that, pretty much every bike in here is between, say, 1800 bucks or 1700 bucks and 3000 bucks, And the average being between 2000 and, say, 2500 bucks. So there's a lot of really cool bikes here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a few of them. And some of them, there's so many variations of the same bike. Uh, so I guess I'll start in, uh, oh, the CC displacement ranges anywhere from, I know it's a little bit on the small side, but 750 CCs up to about 1500. So I figured this would be a good enough range for most people. Now, I was going to start at like, say, 1000 CCs or 1100 CCs and up. But I, I figured, well, you know, you could still cruise pretty good on a 750. You know, like you, you can usually... A lightweight 750 can keep up to like an 1100 or 1200 or 1500 under normal cruising you know like if you're with the really fast guys um, you know the guys with the really big bikes like say you know like the Triumph Rocket threes or something like that or you know like the new Indian Chief 1800s or something like that okay yeah those bikes tend to fly pretty fast down the road and depending on where you are if you're up here in Canada we're going, to, we're going to go with the idea that everybody's staying within the legal speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour, which is about 62 miles an hour or something like that, 63 miles an hour. But we'll say 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, and in the States, I know some places have like 75 mile per hour speed limits, which I think is a little, like, a little excessive, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like, it's a great way to wear out a vehicle. And these type of bikes aren't really... They they can their engines can do that speed all day, but it's it, they're really uh, like for example speed wobbles. I know everybody calls it the Harley Death Wobble or whatever. Uh, these bigger bikes, you know, when they're, once you get above seventy miles per hour, sometimes it's it's beyond their, especially if the bike's a little bit out of alignment. Uh, they can pick up wobbles and stuff. Um, so yeah, there's that. But we're gonna we're gonna go with everybody in your group that you're going to ride with is going to be in the basically in the speed limit range they're not going to be too much over so you want a bike that's big enough to keep up with the big bikes now when you're on like say a 400 cc bike or a 500 or a 650 and you're like oh this bike's got power it's got everything and then you start cruising behind one of these big you know big bikes you know like 1500 cc's whatever they're going to be 1340 you know 1600 1700 whatever the first thing you find is that those bikes stay at a consistent speed and you constantly fall back and you have to play catch up because uh, you start going up a hill, you, the smaller bikes will lose a little bit of speed and you got to rev them up a bit to keep them up. Or these big bikes, they just tug up the hill as if it's nothing, right? And after a while, you notice that these bikes don't get tired on long because they're just so low revving, so torquey, so, you know, they've got everything you want, right? So what bikes would you want to get? And there's so many good bikes to to uh, to look at here. And uh, again, almost all these bikes for like 2,500 bucks, between 2,000 and 2,500 bucks, and ranging between 1,700 and you know the the mo there was only one bike that was 4,000 and two bikes I think that were 3,500. But I'm sure if you were to haggle, you probably could get them for 3,000. So each one of these bikes was taking off of the Facebook. Um, uh, marketplace uh, up here in Canada and I'm talking Canadian prices so in the States you probably get the equivalent in, in probably the same so this is a for example a uh, Yamaha uh, Virago 750 fantastic bike uh, I never owned one but I I've ridden I've probably got more riding time on one of those than you can imagine um, and anyway that bike would keep up fairly well to you know some of the bigger bikes it was shaft driving and like that and i noticed that it was a it was a very it was a very nice bike to ride uh two up okay yeah it would get you know a little bit tired at two up but it was it was plenty of bike but if you were going to go cross country on it you know or like day tripping that type of thing with a group you might find it a little bit anemic 
so the oldest bikes here are from the 1980s, uh, mid 80s, and the newest bikes are I think the newest newest bike is like 2005, something like that. So they're they're you know they're in a good range. So these bikes are they're not really starter bikes if you ask me uh, because the problem with a with a starter bike is that uh, it usually doesn't have enough power. So these are like intermediate bikes to, you know, a bike that you're going to have for years and years and years. So to me, I think that this, the buy-in rate for a tour bike is 1100 cc's. That's just my personal opinion. It's a bike that I know that you can run it all day with a full load, passenger, saddlebags, and it's just not going to get tired, right? So that would be what I would look 1100 cc's and bigger just for myself if I was going to be like, you know, doing like all day rides, that kind of stuff. So what bikes fit the bill? Well, you can go, like I say, with those old Virago 750s. Uh, the Virago series has like a 750, uh, a, a, a 125, a 250. I, I read the, uh, the Virago 250. That one was chain drive. Uh, you know, it was a fun bike, fun little bike. Uh, they have a 500, a 535, great, nice little pretty little bike. Great, great bike for the ladies, but a little bit small for touring touring around like okay like if there's one or two people but if you're in a big group of people that want to you know get from point a to point b um yeah you, you're probably gonna want a bigger bike uh 700 cc 750 cc 930 cc's uh, i think there was even a 900 uh 1000 uh, 1100 1200 i think 1200 was the biggest virago and i rode the 1100 and it was a nice bike it was a that, that's a no-brainer bike if you can find one of those in not too bad a condition and you can usually find them under two thousand dollars now they stopped making the viragos quite a while ago but uh they you can get a gazillion billion miles on them <laughs> you know like they, they just run and run and run uh and they're good bikes and the nice thing about them is they're light for their displacement size so they're not they don't have anything on them that they really don't need uh but if you do need saddlebags and all that stuff yeah you can put a windshield on them you all that stuff uh, saddlebags, whatever. But if you want to like hard case touring, yeah, well, the Virago might not be the bike for you. But it is a great bike choice uh, if you want to keep it cheap. And they got lots of power. They're virtually maintenance free. You know, I mean, you know, age of the bike notwithstanding. But again, they're getting a little bit old. Uh, mileage on them is not too bad. You can get, you know, you can cruise around. Next bike will be a Suzuki Intruder 1400. Now, the Suzuki Intruder 1400 is kind of like. Suzuki's chopper, muscle chopper, to basically deal with Harley Davidsons, right? So, uh, there's no Harley Davidsons in the, in this group because we're trying to stay under three thousand um, dollars. But the uh, Suzuki Intruder fourteen hundred, a very very fun bike. It's it's torquey, kind of to get that nice sleek kind of chopper line. They they had to kind of give up a bit of capacity in the gas tank. And anybody I've ever talked to with a Suzuki Intruder. They've always said the same thing. They love the bike. They love the power. Uh, it's comfortable enough, but uh, you're out of gas all the time, <laughs> just because you know it, it just doesn't have a lot of capacity. So the Suzuki Intruders, the newer ones, obviously are more Harley-esque. Uh, you know, like these are a lot of these are I call them Harley clones, whatever. Uh, but they got much bigger tanks, and you can kind of ride all day on them. You know, you know, get a couple of hundred miles, a few hundred kilometers per tank. Uh, you know, it makes it a good tour bike. Uh, a bike, obviously, series to look at is any sort of Honda Shadow. Um, a Honda Shadow I've always liked was the uh, the controversial one that came out back in the 90s, I believe around 1994, 96, somewhere around that. And it was one of these bikes that they were called the Honda Shadow Ace 1100. And the, these bikes were the first bike I would say that really went after the Harley market directly where they looked more Harley-ish than any other Japanese bike at the time and they also had a whole accessory line for the bikes these were the first kind of beginnings of Japanese bikes able to be accessorized before that the only bike you could really accessorize were Harleys you know where you could buy all kinds of aftermarket parts where for Japanese bikes if you wanted a custom Japanese bike you pretty much had to customize it and build things yourself, you know, kind of like how they did with the 70s. In, in the 70s with the, you know, Triumphs and Harleys and BSAs and stuff like that. So the bolt-on, you know, fanaticism is, you know, takes off from there. But it was a good bike. It was shaft drive. It was 1,100 cc's. I 
never got to ride one, but I've sat on many of them. I did ride an old 750, I'm pretty sure it was a 750 uh, Honda Shadow, but it was an 80s bike, so it had looked nothing like these, these kind of dresser, kind of cruiser, uh, tour bike kind of look. And these aren't outright tour bikes. These are pretty much more more cruiser than tour bike. I, I, I'm going to do a video on tour bikes, like a Goldwing is a tour bike, right? Um, stuff like that. But these were great bikes, and they could be picked up for cheap. This bike, I think, was 2000 bucks. Look at that thing. I mean, it, ha it was just whatever. My uh, cousin had one. It was he, it, There was something wrong with it when you got on it. It felt like it was really heavy on one side. Uh, and we looked at the front end, and we couldn't see that it was out of alignment. But, it, you know, it only has to be out of alignment by a millimeter or two for the, you know, for a You know, you drop a bike, and it's never the same after, right? Uh, I'm not saying he dropped it, but maybe the guy who bought it from did. Uh, but great bike, two around on it all day, start all the time, never leave you anywhere, fuel injection, blah, blah. You know, completely had a free bike. Uh, so those bikes are a great, uh, and the thing is, is there's so many of them out there. Um, yeah, so the next ones would be a Kawi Kawasaki Vulcan line. Uh, you've got the Kawasaki Drifter, which uh, when Honda was going after the uh, kind of Harley market, Kawasaki was kind of going after the uh, Indian, you know, like the, you know, saying, well, we don't want to just completely, you know, go after the uh, the Harley market per se. We want we want something more unique. So they came up with the Kawasaki Drifter, which I think was only an 800, but it had the skirted fenders like an Indian, and a lot of people put the Indian head on there. So for somebody that can't own, uh, afford an actual you know Indian motorcycle, this was your next spec and on, probably only option was a Kawasaki Drifter uh, with the those kind of Indian chief style fenders. Really nice looking bikes. I've seen a few of them, and they're the, you know they're, 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 they are. They're, they're well done. They're well done. Uh, I believe they made them in a few CC displacements, uh, 800 CCs and up, I think. Uh, but the Kawasaki Vulcan line goes back to the 90s. I've had the pleasure of riding one of those freight trains. Uh, the first Kawasaki Vulcan 1500s that they came out, a guy let me uh, go take, do a couple of minutes on it. You know, he goes, yeah, yeah, go out and do 20 minutes on there. He goes, oh, I was telling him the sob story about how all my motorcycles were broken. I had five motorcycles at the same time. They were all broken at the same time. And he's like, ah, oh, chum, here, here, here's my keys. Here. You just take, take the bike. I barely knew the guy. This guy, guy was from the East Coast. And we ended up becoming really friends. And when I came back with the bike, he goes, you know, the thing about it, he goes, I wonder, I, I thought about it. I said, maybe this guy might not come back with my bike. But I do remember the freight train of it, that 1500cc engine. I had ridden Harleys and stuff like that. At the, I, I, well, I had a Harley at that point. I had my uh, 1948 Harley Davidson Panhead. Uh, but I had ridden Evos, a 1340. I got to try that. I got, you know, shovel heads, uh, 1200s, uh, 1340s. I had tried those bikes. And the Kawasaki Vulcan was. It was a rocket ship in comparison. Like, uh, you know, no offense to the Harley Davidsons, but Harley Davidsons are just slowly starting in to get into the performance levels of a 1990s Kawasaki Vulcan. <laughs> you know, they're just getting there now. You know what I mean? Uh, no, no, no disrespect to the Harley engines, but they're they're behind the times, right? They're they're getting better though. Uh, the new the new lineups uh, like the Sports Duress looks like an interesting bike. They're finally going overhead cams and stuff like that. Uh, which will change the dynamic of a Harley, sure, but uh, I know they've been doing it with the V-Rods, but the V-Rods were their own thing. I didn't add V-Rods in here because they, they, they're too expensive to be a, you know, a good, you know, budget cruiser. Uh, but anyway, the Kawasaki Vulcan, it evolved into like the Nomad, which, you, you know, I think this is a Nomad here, or whatever. Uh, they, they've got the Drifter, the Nomad, the uh, Classic, the, you know, there's a hundred flavors of these. But the neat thing is like this uh, kind of uh, goldish, sil silvery bike that we, we just passed there. That bike, I think, was 1800 uh, bucks. Two hard cases on it, a win I don't, uh, no windshield, but, you know, like, I mean, it's a Decker with, you know, for 1800 bucks thing looks mint you know i mean the mileage might be on it but i mean we're talking japanese motorcycles it doesn't really you know that doesn't really matter as much those things just run and run no they're not maintenance free 100 percent, but they're 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 pretty reliable right um 
and again like some great good looking bikes for cheap now you say yeah but the resale values you know going to be not as good as whatever and it'd be like okay yeah you just bought a bike for two grand and you're worried about resale value <laughs> it's two grand <laughs> you know what I mean yeah two grand's a lot of money but it's not 20 grand it's not it's not 50 grand you know what I mean like it, the resale value on a bike under three thousand dollars I mean you ride the piss out of it and then when you're done with it you sell it for 1500 who cares right uh, you, you've had your fun you know what I mean like, I know guys that would do that they would buy a bike wear the tires down and sell it for and chances are like this bike these bikes some of these bikes you would sell them for the exact price or even a hundred bucks more than what you probably paid for them you know if you if you washed it before you sold it you know what I mean <laughs> like like it, it's you know, like buy it wear the tires down to about halfway or sell it and, you know rather than you know sell it for what you bought for buy another bike that has better tires on it <laughs> you know like people do that why because it's just cheaper right uh, but these bikes yeah they're all over the place and they're great uh, you know especially the you know like I mean we're talking 1500 cc motorcycles yes I know there's some you know like the, the new Triumph Rocket is like 2500 cc's yeah but that that bike is like astronomically expensive right um, the cheapest Triumph Rockets I seen were like 7500 bucks and that's for like the first gen ones right and they were 2300 cc's yeah so it might be a little bit anemic in comparison to that but it's still 1500 cc's so if we're talking cruising at a reasonable speed not 80 miles per hour but just speed limit stuff the any one of these bikes is going to be excellent uh, what bikes would I recommend the most well each one of these bikes is going to have a quirk and quirk the problem is when they style a motorcycle like this uh, and these big bike, these big bikes with the, the hard cases and stuff like that. Uh, things you want to take into consideration is like ground clearance. Uh, some bikes are have more ground clearance than others, so you know depending on how you ride, where you ride. None of these bikes are going to corner well. Like I mean, they're you know baggers don't corner. Period. Uh, you know, tour, you know, cruisers don't typically corner that well. Like Harley Davidsons corner between 19 and 22 degrees typically tops the newer bikes may be a little bit more but that you know the, the you're going to be scraping pegs and floorboards and exhaust and frames going around sharp corners that's not what these bikes are meant for but what you might want to take in consideration if you're doing a long range tour is if you had to get out the back tire you know like uh, does the bike have a center stand uh, you know maintenance wise stuff like that how easy is it to get to work on it um, some bikes more finicky than others uh, for example the next bike I'm going to recommend probably would be one of the easiest bikes to find and probably one of the uh, best bargain bikes out of the whole lot it would be the uh, V-Star 1100 and the Yamaha V-Star line uh, there's the V-Star the Royal Star the road the road the, the road star or whatever again like the Kawasaki Vulcan there's a hundred different players flavors and some of these bikes go up to like uh, 1600 cc's there's one I think it was like three grand it was like 1600 cc's and it was just like I mean, what do you do with that like that's a car <laughs> you know like you got Honda Civics with 1.5 liter engines <laughs> you know what I mean uh, th this thing you know so you could just you can get your getting from these things it's, it's very impressive for what they are uh, again they're not going to break any land speed records and whatever but they're going to pull like a freight train and you can drive them at you know good mileage like 40 45 50 miles per gallon all day you know the worst bike will probably get like 35 miles per gallon like you know like most cars don't get that um, so yeah there's a lot of things you'll look at but uh, the Yamaha V-Star I've never ridden the 1100 but I, I when I took my course um, we did 10 hours on the road and I did that 10 hours on a V-Star 650 and the chassis of the 650 and the 1100 are virtually the same chassis uh, the difference is uh, the 1100 has a dual disc brakes up at front I don't know if you really need that the bikes not any much gonna be much heavier and there's a few little subtle things that are different but you got 1100 cc's of a bike uh, with floorboards uh, saddlebags hard cases you know windshield you can even get a fairing on the, the front of some like look at some of these bikes I mean they're just gorgeous you know what I mean and for for the price uh, although I know like some bikes have quirks and the V-Star for example 1100 I can imagine the 650 is probably the same uh, when you go to change the oil filters in them 
Uh, apparently the exhaust kind of blocks off, so you have to remove one exhaust pipe to be able to get out. So a 30 minute oil change turns into like a two hour job. Uh, so then maybe you might have to look at, you know, like quirks and quirks of each bike. I know the Honda Shadows, you can pretty much work on them. <laughs> you know, like you almost don't have to take the tank off to work on most of the most of these bikes, which is again impressive. Uh, so if I had to pick two bikes, I would probably look for an older Honda Shadow Ace, just because. Uh, again, it's anybody that I've ever talked to, like th these bikes run and run. It's a Honda, right? Um, and I don't know of any real common problems with those bikes. I've never seen one in a motorcycle shop being repaired. You know what I mean? <laughs> like tire changes, sure, because those wear out. Uh, maybe getting a, a new type of exhaust put on it, fine, whatever. But I've never seen one go into the shop because it needs to be rebuilt. or <laughs> and, and people probably wouldn't waste money rebuilding. And when they came out, I think the Honda Shadow Ace was like $11,000, which was a, probably one of the more expensive Japanese bikes at the time. Like it was... Most of the bikes, in, Japanese bikes in the 90s, did not break the uh, $9,000 mark, even the super bikes, um, which was crazy. You know, like you used to be able to, uh, the, like the first Yamaha R1s in 1998, I think were $8,000. <laughs> I mean, you got to think of how much motorcycle you were getting for that, like the, that type of performance, right? So a full, like a gold wing was getting expensive, but that was like a spaceship, right? That was, you know, that was the flagship of the, of the company for their motorcycles. Uh, so why didn't I add um, gold wings into this, this lot? Well, I don't consider a gold wing a cruiser. I consider it an outright tour bike. Uh, the first gen gold wing you might consider as a, you know, as a um, uh, possible cruiser because it didn't have all the fairings but you could put a like a, a bolt-on fairing to the gen 1 uh, gold wings uh, and, and stuff like that but it was still always designed as a dedicated touring bike so that's why I didn't add it as a cruiser what separates a cruiser from a gold like a, a tour bike well bells and whistles mainly but uh, you know you can strip down a, a cruiser like for example the Virago you can have it a lot more bare bones so you don't have all that extra weight of you know you know, permanent hard cases and saddlebags grafted to the motorcycle, right? Uh, so, you know, and then just, you know, it's just more of a style thing. Uh, but will they both accomplish the same, same type of job? Yeah, kind of, kind of. Uh, the last bike I'm going to mention here was the most expensive bike out of the lot. And I just, I added it because sometimes you can find these bikes uh, for a fair price. The lowest I've ever seen one was $2,500. Needed work, but uh, you know, it was that. I've seen some in the $3,500 range, uh, but uh, this one was $4,000 and it was the, it, it, you probably already noticed it right away uh, at the beginning of the video, and that was the uh, Honda Valkyrie. And if you want a cool cruiser, uh, when these things came out, these things, uh, you know, these things can never be mistaken for a Harley Davidson, right? No one, you know, the, 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 like I say, the two bikes I would recommend as a cru cruisers for, especially in the V twin kind of category, would be again the V Star 1100. I'd take a good look at that one first, followed by again, you got Suzuki Intruders in there that are, you know, great again you find them cheap but I, I would go for the v-star before i'd go for the intruder and the second would be the honda shadows just because there's so many of them out there that you can probably find a really good deal on one in great shape um and again just honda reliability so i'm not paid by honda or anything like that but it's just you know they do have a reputation of being pretty good bikes and anybody i've ever talked to that's owned any variation of honda shadow which there's a lot of variations of them uh, they've always, you know, I've, I've seen guys sell their Harleys for Honda Shadows, uh, especially when the, the these um, uh, Honda Shadow Aces came out. I remember one guy sold his, his new Evo. He, he sold it uh, because he only had it for like two or three months. And, you know, every, you know of course, every, a lot of people dumped on him for it, whatever. But he said, like, when he had the Harley, he said, uh, you know, I rode it around, it was good, but, it, you know, I'd spent not a lot of time in the shop. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Harleys, but they, you know, like, they are maintenance bikes, right? Uh, 
Uh, he goes to Honda. He says, I, I, you know, I just get on it and go. There's, ne there's never an issue with the Honda. You know what I mean? And that's why he bought it. And he didn't have to worry about belt changes, <laughs> you know, transmission fluids, and all, all that stuff as much. You know, although technically, you got the, you know, the rear drive on the Honda is, is shaft drive, so whatever. But you know, like it, he was. It never left him anywhere. You know what I mean? Like it never left him. And he put a lot of kilometers on that bike. Um, so again, and he did it at a, you know, a third the price, right? So, uh, yeah. So I, you know, there wasn't a lot of guys that would do that. I know the Harley fans are the Harley fans, and that's it. That's all. That, that's the, you know, there's nothing, that, no other bike they like, but. You know, like again, if you're not really a fanboy or like you know loyalty to a brand, any one of these bikes can be a really good option. I can because you're all riding in the same wind, right? So if you don't care about spending thirty grand or fifty grand on a bike, uh, but you want something that looks good, but you know is going to be reliable, well, these are these are it. You know, I mean, they're gonna some of them. You know, you got to take the age of the bike and condition of the bike into consideration, but you're gonna get a lot for the money. So anyway, getting back to the Honda Valkyrie. So the Honda Valkyrie comes out, and this thing's 1,500 cc's. Uh, like, it's very stylish. These things are freight trains, and they're basically they took the Goldwing engine, uh, the Goldwing 1500, uh, you know, a GL 1500, or whatever, and they took that engine, they put it into a cruiser, more cruiser oriented rather than touring oriented chassis. So. It had a bit of like a, a retro 50s kind of Harley-esque kind of look of it to them. But because it wasn't a V-twin, it was a horizontally opposed uh, six-cylinder. <laughs> yeah, six-cylinder. Uh, these things, not only were they freight trains, uh, and uh, I mean, the, the fanboys of these things, yeah. You know, like they weren't like the V-Max guys. The Valkyrie guys aren't like the, the V-Max guys. And I didn't add the V-Max in here because... Again, V Maxes, even the first gen ones are like well over four grand typically for you know one that runs, and it, that's more of a muscle bike rather than a regular cruiser. Um, I put it in a different category, uh, but it was mainly because there's once you get above like five grand, there's you know the world's your oyster. But under under three grand, it is hard to find a good bike. But uh, you know like a, like a lot of choice of bikes, but there is more choice out there than you think. So. The reason why I added the, the the Valkyrie was because of how special it is. Um, it is a great bike. Yeah, there's six carburetors on it, so you got, you know if you're not good with carburetors, you don't have a carburetion uh, synchronization kit. Uh, you, you know it might not be the bike for you. But that said, on the reliability, it's basically a Goldwing engine in a slightly well. I mean, it's still like an 800 pound bike, but uh, you know you got tour bike capabilities. But cruiser style goes like a freight train. Uh, will never be mistaken for a Harley because people, as soon as they see the like the, the engine just sticks out on that. Literally, it sticks out, right? Um, and and you know it, it it it's a distinctive bike. So it's a bike that it gives you a bit of a status as well as uh, you know and for the money and for the money. Most of those bikes can be had between four and five grand all day so up here in canada so again it, you know i know it's a little out of the, the price range you may find the odd honda valkyrie for uh you know like i say three thousand thirty five hundred again a bit over our price range here for today but i i just thought it was worth mentioning uh because they are very cool bikes and whatever but the if you you got to stay in this the 1500 cc range uh, the Kawasaki Balkans and the newer Suzuki Intruders, uh, you know, early 2000s Suzuki Intruders, get you into that range. Uh, some of them are 1700 cc's or whatever. Uh, there's some pretty big bikes out there for like under three grand, and it's just it, it's mind blowing. 1600 cc's, 1700 cc's, 1500 cc's all day. You know what I mean? Um, but if the you didn't want to go for a bike quite that heavy. Uh, you would be happy with like say a thousand cc's 1100 1200s whatever uh, 1100 being probably the the sweet spot of a bike that's heavy enough to be a tour bike but not so heavy that it's you know you know really heavy you know what i mean 
So yeah, there we go. So uh, you guys can tell me what you think about these type of bikes and, you know, if you've ridden any of them, the things you liked about them, the things you didn't like about them, uh, maintenance issues, whatever. And each one of these bikes is going to have some quirk and quirk about them. They're, every motorcycle does have its thing, you know, like the Suzuki Intruder 1400s, for example, uh, were a real pain in the ass to adjust the valves on because you needed a special wrench from Suzuki to do it. Uh, the V-Stars, you know, I've seen something on 1100s you have to check the valve clearance every uh, 4,000 well every servicing you have to check it doesn't mean you have to adjust it but you have to check them every 4,000 and then you know the, the oil filter which I do believe they uh, said they sell uh, a conversion kit for the oil filters for the V-Star 1100s so that um, you don't have to remove the exhaust pipe every time you want to change the oil which you would think Yamaha would have thought about that but Again, when they design these dressery type of bikes, sometimes they put uh, aesthetics above functionality. Because uh, usually most Japanese bikes, it's easy to change the oil filter on. Uh, heck, even my sport bike, it's easy to change the oil filter on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and that's a sport bike, you know. And sport bikes are a pain in the ass to do just about anything on. Um, but anyway, yeah, so a lot of great cruisers. Uh, you know a lot of great styles lots to choose from and for the price so if you're into the cruisers the world is really your oyster you, you you've got so much to pick from but if you're on a tight budget and you want a good bike and whatever like i say almost every one of these bikes here was under three grand so or you know under 2500 bucks so uh out of the you know the high side they were three grand two were 3500 one was uh 4,000 that was the Valkyrie. I can't remember which ones were uh, 3,500 uh, Canadian dollars um, I, But you, you can see like again you get a lot of these bikes are like they're fully dressed and, and they're you know like two grand 2,500 and on the low side, I think 1700 bucks was the cheapest bike in here I can't remember which bike it was though uh, It wasn't necessarily the oldest bike either. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. So give you gives you stuff so Vulcans, uh, V Stars, Shadows, um, Intruders. These are probably going to be the four most common uh, variations of bikes from all the big, you know, Japanese four, you know, the, four, the big Japanese four uh, that you're going to find. Uh, again, I didn't put any like Triumphs or anything in there because, again, they all start, you know, those bikes start up. You know, like the Triumph American uh, starts at like, uh, you know, five, six grand to find, you know, you might find the odd one uh, out there. But uh, the other thing, too, is that, uh, you know, again, th these bikes, there's enough of them out there that anything that's ever went wrong with them, uh, you know, the reputations are well documented. So good bikes, bad bikes. Like I say, the Suzuki, early model Suzuki Intruders. People love them, but they tend to be a little bit short on range because of the smaller gas tanks. The later models take care of that, but they don't look anything like the uh, early models. Um, yeah. All right. So anyway, if you like this con kind of content, uh, all the links are down below to help support the channel. Thank you so much to everybody who has. Next up, rate, subscribe, share, comment, like, be true to yourself, be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. Have yourselves a great day. Eh?